In psychology, we are constantly coming up with theories. We convert these theories into testable hypotheses, and therefore we conduct experiments, we generate data, and we try to draw valid and robust conclusions. The problem is, the validity of our conclusions might be impacted by the presence of extraneous and confounding variables. And that's the point of this video. We're gonna define what we mean by extraneous and confounding variables. We're gonna point out similarities and importantly, contrast the two. Let's start with extraneous variables. So the word extraneous means outside. So if you're extraneous to the cool group, you're not in the cool group, you're a cool group wannabe. So what we mean in science by an extraneous variable is any variable other than the independent variable that has the potential to affect the dependent variable. And so therefore, when we're designing our experiments, our research, we want to anticipate any variables other than the independent variable that can affect the DV. Because if we can do a good job in controlling those, then we're going to generate more valid data, more reliable data, and we're gonna be able to move the whole field of psychology forward. Importantly, an extraneous variable can become a confounding variable, and this is where it gets a bit confusing for students, and I'll try and um, unravel this as we go a bit further on. So in the VCE study design, as it stands, we have four extraneous slash confounding variables that are mentioned, and these will get airplay in future videos, past videos that I've made. So I'm not gonna go into depth on those at the moment, but any of these are variables other than the independent variable that have the potential to affect the DV, or they could be become confounding. And again, we'll, um, we'll tap into that shortly. So in terms of confounding variables, the word confound means confused. So when we have a confounding variable that's been identified after we've conducted an experiment, and maybe that has been identified by a third party, what we have is a variable other than the IV that has systematically throughout the experiment affected the DV. So now we're confused. Was it the manipulation? To what extent was the manipulation of the independent variable affecting the DV? And to what extent was this other variable that we didn't anticipate affecting the DV? So now, as it stands, we've got an experiment where we can't draw a valid conclusion. So in terms of similarities between CVs and EVs, well, both of them are variables other than the independent variable that can affect the DV. And both of them, if they're not controlled, can diminish our validity and reliability of our data, our results, our conclusions, etc. So how do they differ? Well, let's look at tense. An extraneous variable is something that we anticipate may affect the DV in the future. And the importance of that is that we have the capability or the potential to control it. And if we can control extraneous variables, then like I said before, we're gonna generate more valid and reliable data. Now, a confounding variable, on the other hand, has affected the DV, it's too late. We've figured it out after we've drawn and gathered our data, and now we can't draw a valid conclusion. So basically, that means we almost need to start again in terms of our experiment. So let's just look at an example, and this is sensitive, so therefore I've gone with grade sixes. Let's, let's say we have a hypothesis that um, year sixes will be less engaged when they're learning remotely during these COVID times than when they're in class. So our independent variable is whether they're in class or whether they're learning remotely. DV is their level of engagement. We could work that out by getting them to do some type of rating scale, a self-report, etc. So we've designed our experiment. We're gonna test the kids remotely. We're gonna test them when they're in class. So then we get, we put on our think tank and we think, all right, what are some, some of the variables that could affect the DV other than the IV, whether they're in class or not? And so we might have placebo effects because we're telling the kids we're gonna do this experiment and that can create expectations. So therefore we can control that by single blinding it. What about an experimenter effect? The teachers are in on it. 
they're going to have expectations. That might affect the way they run their classes, etc. So again, we can control that by double blinding. That's going to be easier said than done. Um, but again, if we can anticipate it, then we can attempt to control it. Non-standardized effects. Well, that could be stuff like um, the time of day, the lessons on, the heat of the room, um, etc., the quality of the audio that they're listening to. All of these non-standardized procedures, etc., can impact the um, the actual data. Now, if they're confounding, well, that's when we've already got the data. We've got the kids to do their self-rating scores of engagement, both in class and remotely. And now someone's pointed out that we didn't single blind it. So we might have placebo effects that could have affected the DV. That's confounding. We didn't double blind it. So maybe the experimenters, the teachers, they might have that might have affected their behavior. And now we're not sure if it was their actions or the actual remote versus class-based learning that's affected the DV. And likewise, we might have weather um, that might like the temperature of the room, sound quality, lighting, etc. All of these might have been pointed out after the fact that these weren't controlled. So now, again, they're confounding variables. Hope that helps.